Okay, welcome back everyone. Welcome to our uh, the second session of our NPFV Land Summit, a journey of self advocacy and community connection. Uh, today's session is titled Bridging the Gap, Developing Resources for Patients by Patients. Next slide, please. So, uh, we during this hour, um, we brought on some of our NPFV land patient subject matter experts. Uh, to, to discuss how they are impacting patient care and helping patients improve their quality of life. Uh, we're looking at the agenda. Uh, we will discuss what the NPFE LAN is. Uh, we're going to give you a look at the affinity group resources uh, our patient subject matter experts are working on. Uh, and then we will uh, answer some of your questions. Next slide. So, what is the NPFE LAN? Uh, a LAN is a forum for bringing healthcare professionals and patients and other stakeholders together around a shared agenda or goal to achieve rapid, wide scale improvement. LAN participants have the opportunity to convert personal knowledge and experience into shared common knowledge by joining together and sharing information that is valuable to both patients and healthcare providers. A land is designed to be highly interactive and engaging and inspiring. Through group discussion, collaborative activities, and the sharing of experiences, we focus on spreading patient-friendly resources beyond the land members, identifying opportunities to improve patient facility staff communication, and identifying our own resilience in living the best possible life with kidney disease. In the land, uh, we showcase personal stories, patient achievement, and challenges we experience as patients with chronic kidney disease. Next slide. Let's talk about uh, the land goals. So we want to improve the quality of care and life for all kidney patients. We're gonna share the land work beyond its members. And then we're going to create a community of sharing. Next slide. Each year, the NPFV Lane develops resources for networks to use uh, in their mandatory objective and key results, or OKRs. Land resource development and network OKR implementa implementation run concurrently. So land developed materials are used by networks during the following OKRs. The NPFE land resources are also shared on the ESRD NCC website, uh, patient to patient and social media. So again, in the land, the patient and family member voices are included in all areas of kidney care. The land is designed to spread practical approaches that can be used to help other patients become engaged in their health care to improve their quality of life. And the land supports the spread of resources to ESRD networks, dialysis facilities, transplant centers, and renal community advocacy groups. Next slide. So as uh, I mentioned, there are five areas of care that the current NPFE land is focused on. Uh, depression, home dialysis and nursing home care, COVID-19 and other vaccinations, uh, kidney transplants and, hospi and hospitalizations. Uh, we have invited a member from each of the affinity groups to talk about the work that they are doing. Uh, we're gonna start with the depression affinity group. Uh, the depression affinity group overall goal is to help support the network goal of increasing the number of patients accurately screened and treated for depression. The affinity group believes it has identified a resource that will do that. Uh, the tool is currently in draft form, but will soon be finalized and made available to everyone. All right, uh, next slide. Unfortunately, our uh, speaker for this first group isn't available. Uh, at least I'm not seeing her in um, on WebEx just yet. Uh, but um, I I would like to talk to you about the resource. So 
uh, the resource that the Affinity Group created. Uh, it's a one page or front and back, um, and it's titled Car Caring for Your Mind and Body. It is a self questionnaire for kidney patients uh, to help them express how they, they are feeling. Uh, so, and it provides tips to help patients improve their mental well being. It includes resources to get help for depression or if a patient is having suicidal thoughts. Uh, and it encourages patients to share their responses with a healthcare professional. Uh, the group, again, uh, wanted to not only support patients uh, who are having uh, um, um, maybe uh, depressive thoughts or not feeling well mentally, and so they thought that a uh, a resource that asks you know questions about how they are feeling and, and then being able to point a uh, patient to help uh, would be a benefit to uh, helping the uh, the ESRD networks um, in their in their their goal of um, getting more patients screened for depression. Uh, again, this resource is in the draft form and will be made available um, to the ESRD networks, uh, as well as placed on the ESRD NCC website and will be shared by members of the NPFE LAN affinity groups once it is complete. So next slide. Uh, we're going to talk about the work of the home dialysis and nursing home care affinity group. Uh, the affinity, this affinity group is focused on supporting the network goal of increasing the number of ESRD patients starting dialysis using a home modality and decreasing the catheter infection rate in dialysis patients receiving home dialysis at nursing homes. Uh, the affinity group believes it has identified a resource that will help educate patients on the benefits of home treatment. The tool is currently also in draft form, but will soon be made available. Uh, so next slide. I'd like to introduce Sonia Hoffman from the Home Dialysis and Nursing Home Care Affinity Group. Welcome to the session, uh, Sonia. Thank you. So, uh, can you talk about the resource the Home Dialysis and Nursing Home Care Affinity Group uh, created? Well, the, the point was to get information out in regards to home hemodialysis. There's so many, there's so much misinformation and lack of information out there uh, regarding the home hemodialysis. And we wanted to make sure that all patients uh, at a very early part of becoming a renal patient, have the option and actually know what's involved and the benefits of doing uh, home hemodialysis. Of course, uh, one, uh, one solution doesn't fit all, but it's a, an absolutely great solution for many people. And a lot of people don't have the correct information, don't have the answers to the questions readily available, uh, that will help them make a, a good decision about which particular type of dialysis they want to do. Uh, home hemodialysis has worked great for us. Uh, we have done it for 14 years. Um, in between, there was a short period where uh, he did have a transplant, but of course the uh, disease did kill that kidney and we were back on home dialysis. Um, and we have done it six to seven days a week. Uh, the benefit uh, for us was just astounding compared to going in center. It was a world of difference, and we wanted to be able to educate other patients to be able to make the choice that we made um, and know the benefits to them, both uh, as far as their health went, as far as their social life went, as far as working and other activities. So uh, you are a care partner to a home hemo patient. Uh, so is that the reason why you selected to be a part of the home dialysis affinity group? 
Yes, and also because I wanted to make sure when we found out about, um, we went in center first. And when he first went into renal failure, we had no information. We barely had any information on in center. Uh, but as far as home dialysis, that was never presented. There was no conversation about PD. There was none about HHD. There was no information whatsoever. And it wasn't until the uh, three days a week in center caused him to spend more time in the hospital than it did at home that we were presented with the option of uh, home dialysis. Patients should not be put in a position where it becomes a necessary option, so to speak. You should have, and patients should know that they have the option. Uh, and to me, it's very important that they get this information up front so that they can make decisions as to what's best for them and their care partners uh, if they go on home uh, dialysis or, or PD. Uh, so it was very important for me that in this information gets out to patients and that they get the correct information uh, as to what it's like uh, to do these, um, do dialysis from home and the, the great benefits to them for doing it. And my main concern was I didn't want other patients and people to go through what we had to go through because of the lack of information. And I wanted to make sure that the information got out and got out in a timely manner at the beginning, instead of where a situation comes up where now uh, all of a sudden you're rushing to find some alternative because in center is just not working. Yeah. So um, what have you learned since being a part of the home dialysis affinity group and the NPFE land? What are some of the things that, know, have benefited you from participating uh, in the affinity groups? Well, what's great is you, you get to hear different people's perspective. Uh, when you're doing it yourself, you know how things affect you in your particular situation. But everyone's situation is different. And it's nice to learn uh, in creating these uh, these documents is that there's different input that fits all into the same category. In other words, different experiences all benefit from doing the home hemodialysis. And when you work together, you get to you get to share those different experiences uh, that other people have had and how they all work together to the benefit of doing home hemodialysis. Yeah. And uh, you being a, a care partner, I, I know uh, to someone that is living with a kidney failure, uh, that's, uh, it's been very valuable to you. Um, uh, can you t talk a little bit more about why you like being a part of the home dialysis affinity group and um, part of your uh, network Act patient advisory committee and uh, the NPF land? Well, there is a, um, what's nice about the network is there are issues that come up uh, in, in doing uh, these treatments at home. And you have someone that you can go to outside of your actual dialysis unit uh, that is working with you to help you resolve issues because uh, not everyone, but there will be times that other things come up uh, that cannot be handled through your dialysis unit, that you will need an outside advocate to help you and assist you through other issues. And it's the, the network is, is a great place for everyone to connect, to get answers outside of their dialysis unit. Sometimes the dialysis unit doesn't have the answers that you need. And connecting with this network, uh, it gives you an opportunity to connect with a, a wide range of people and get those uh, questions answered. Uh, it's, uh, you know, anything that benefits and that you learn that you can pass on it is great because we don't all have the answers. None of us do. But when you get together as a collective group and share that and put it together, it not only helps you that are in that group, but it also helps other people who 
who are just now learning and becoming part of uh, doing dialysis. So it's a, it, it's a great connection. Thank you, Sonia. I appreciate your feedback and uh, so glad that you're part of the home dialysis and nursing home care affinity group. Thank you. So uh, next slide, please. So uh, we're gonna talk about the COVID-19 and vaccination affinity group. Uh, the group is focused on supporting the network goal of decreasing the number of COVID-19 hospitalizations in ESRD patients and increase the number of patients receiving a flu vaccine as well as a pneumonia vac vaccine. The affinity group believes it has identified a resource that will help educate patients on the importance of getting the flu and pneumonia vaccines. Uh, the tool is under review now and will be um, finalized very soon. Next slide. Uh, I want to welcome Ken Seasley uh, from the COVID-19 and Vaccination Affinity Group to, uh, to the call. Welcome, Ken. Hello, Jerome. So, Ken, uh, can you talk about the resource uh, this affinity group is uh, creating? Yes, um, we created a fact sheet for both the flu and the pneumonia vaccine. Um, this fact sheet includes myths and facts. Um, and the part that I like really well is at the bottom, there is a blurb from the CDC on their recommendations for each of those vaccines. Yeah, so why did the, the group wanna focus on uh, flu and pneumonia? Um, number one, uh, they are both preventable diseases. Um, number two, there was a lot of misinformation out, um, and we wanted to quell a little bit of that. Now, Ken, you've been a part of the uh, NPFE lane for quite some time. Uh, why did you choose to be a part of the COVID-19 and vaccination affinity group? Well, at the time, I kind of did not have a choice. <laughs> um, as you know, in uh, March of 2020, New York was shut down due to COVID. Um, we became the epicenter of what was going on. And in um, later that year, in May, um, a couple of legacy members got together and put together uh, some information on um, transplant infection rates. And I decided to continue that work with the COVID and vaccine um, because I had done so much work with COVID uh, with the network during that time, because I also serve on the board. So I was uh, in the fray early on um, and by May, we had just, um, we had lost over 3,500 patients. So it was definitely worth for me to continue this work to help prevent more deaths in the future. Yeah. Um, sounds like you've been, you know, touched personally. Uh, you know, what do you hope uh, this resource uh, that the group is creating, what do you hope to uh, th it accomplishes? Well, it's a double-edged sword for me. Um, like I said before, I hope it uh, quells some of the uh, misinformation that's going around. Um, and uh, the biggest reason for me is hopefully this will uh, be a a small notch in someone's belt as um, they register for a transplant. Um, that's the biggest for me. Um, I am a transplant recipient myself um, who has just returned to dialysis. Um, but um, I have been taking all of my vaccinations since um, I was a small child. So, um, um, that's one of the things that are kind of important for me is that to make sure that people can actually get the things that they need 
um, as they go on the journey of transplant. You know, uh, vaccination is such an important topic um, uh, with the ESRD networks, the ES, um, ESRD NCC, CMS. You know, we have uh, many healthcare professionals on the call that work with patients that may be hesitant uh, to be uh, vaccinated for the flu or um, COVID or pneumonia. What advice would you give uh, those healthcare professionals who are working with hesitant patients? Oh, wow. Um, that's a hard question. <laughs> um, but hopefully, um, uh, you can use this fact sheet um, to kind of walk through that process. And also, uh, we have peer mentors, um, both on the network and also with the with the LAN. And you can make use of those, especially for those of us who've had uh, the vaccines before. Um, you know, that's that's yeah, that's really a hard question. <laughs> okay. So, and again, as I mentioned, you've been a part of the NPFC land um, and several of our affinity groups. You've been a part of the work of the ESRD networks for quite some quite some time. Uh, why do you? like being a part of um, these different groups? Well, with the network, um, I can add my voice um, for the people of New York or for the dialysis patients of New York. Um, but with the LAN, I can add my voice to the whole country or nationally. Um, so that's a big thing for me. And because of, um, you know, I have 29 years of experience, so um, I can add that with pretty much any kind of situation that, that arises. All right. Well, Ken, thank you very much. I, I appreciate you being with us. Um, I'm sure our audience will have questions for you in a bit, but um, we're going to move on to our next slide, but we'll, I'm sure we'll come back to you. Thank you very much. Yep, no problem. Let's talk about the work of the Kidney Transplant Affinity Group. Uh, so this group is focused on supporting the network goal of increasing the number of patients uh, added to the kidney transplant waitlist and increasing number of patients who ultimately receive a transplant. Uh, the affinity group believes it has identified a resource uh, that will help educate patients uh, on their transplant options. Uh, we, this tool is in draft form and will soon be finalized and made available to everyone. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, I want to introduce Kim Pratt from the Kidney Transplant Affinity Group, uh, Kidney Transplant Affinity Group. Welcome, Kim. Hi, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Kim. Uh, can you describe the resource uh, the Affinity Group is creating? Yes. Um, well, it's called How Might I Shorten My Time on the Kidney Transplant Waitlist, and um, it covers a different you know, it gives you different ideas of how to do that, how to shorten the time of your wait time. And I think, um, you know, one of them is the expanded criteria donor. And, you know, there's a lot of people that don't, you know, don't really know what that is, you know, and, and as the, as it indicates there, it's uh, from an over 60 donor or uh, someone in their 50s with risk factors. Um, there's multiple listing. You can, you know, go to different facilities and uh, and get try to get listed. I mean, like I'm in Rhode Island, and I'm sure that if I, at the time, I did not do this, but that an option would have been maybe to try to get listed in Boston or uh, another another location in New England, perhaps. Um, living donor. 
is is always a, a great option. That's uh, what I was able to uh, obtain. I found an altruistic donor, and um, my kidney worked immediately. I it was uh, I was able to get as soon as I was actively on the wait list. Uh, I was able to locate, which um, is a needle in a haystack, but I did find a, a donor, and that really sped things up for me because I was on the list, but my, my, you know, my turn wasn't coming up quite yet. So I, that, that did help me personally, actually. Um, a lot of people are not educated on uh, what the kidney donor profile index is, and it's a measure of, you know, the kidney function. I think some people are, are a little nervous of things that they don't understand, which would be you know, maybe a higher risk a kidney, but a higher uh, obtaining a higher risk kidney or one that has a few issues is is statistically better to take than to stay on dialysis. Uh, you know, statistics show that a, a a kidney like this is you you should would be living longer than to just to remain on a dialysis modality, and that's that's what you know, we are told um, a lot of things can come up when you stay on dialysis. Uh, some people are on dialysis for 20 years, but some people um, it starts to wear on their bodies in other areas. So in my opinion, this is a great tool to educate people on what, uh, what other options are. I know that when I filled out some paperwork, when I was going to obtain my kidney, it asked, are you willing to accept uh you know, a kidney that's that a high risk kidney. And I, I did check the box. Yes. But I really didn't quite understand at that time what that meant. I didn't understand about uh, the index, you know, the profile index. But now this, this will help a lot of patients, you know, clear answer those questions and clear up any confusion that they've had. You know, um, it sounds like you are, have learned a lot uh, uh, about the process, the transplant process, since being a part of uh, the kidney transplant affinity group. Would would that be fair to say? Yes. Yes. So, uh, and, yes. You know, how did you learn about your transplant options? Well, I learned uh, my about my transplant options were through the doctors and I would say, you know, my nephrologist, the dialysis nephrologist and my, um, my nephrologist at the kidney transplant. Um, but honestly, these, this in-depth education that these tools offer are more, more information that I received years ago. So I, Eight years ago was when I started dialysis, and then three years ago is when I did receive a transplant. And I wish that these tools were more, were told, you know, it was expressed to me in more detail that this was available, that these tools existed. And now this particular tool we're working on. But, I mean, the information uh, that you've been doing for years, I, I just wasn't educated on that. I know that I had a wonderful social worker, but there's just so many things I think that they can, that time that they can invest in each patient. Sometimes that's limited and, and then there's a, a communication issue where you just don't get the full amount of information that you can now look up on these tools that through the affinity groups. Um, it, it's, it's very important that it, it helps the patients understand what decisions they should make at each crossroads that they are, you know, are thrown at them through dialysis. I mean, we're all in the same boat, but we all have different issues. And uh, this, this is a wonderful tool. Yeah, now it's uh, basically the same question that I've uh, asked your uh, two fellow peers. Uh, why do you like being a part of the kidney transplant affinity group? You know, your ESRD network, um, and uh, a part of the NPFE land. Oh, well, from the day one, you are all very professional. Everything is, is such a, it's a professional operation that allows um, us to meet 
and and hear other fellow patients' stories. And even though, and, and this is regarding pre-transplant and post-transplant, I still learn even after three years of being, uh, you know, uh, had my transplant, I learn from other patients because other things can arise um, after you transplant. And, and, and it's just really helpful to hear what other patients have gone through and, and share those experiences because we, we all have the same passion and dedication to help others improve the quality of their lives, you know, through sharing our experience and our knowledge. You know, our, our stories enlighten pre and post transplant patients and give them some sense of hope that, that they can get through all this and it's obtainable. And then, and because the whole journey of, um, kidney failure or kidney disease is overwhelming at some point. I think all of us have felt a degree of being overwhelmed and not understanding what are what's available to us and how we navigate through that. These, these are maps on how to navigate our journey with, you know, ESRD, you know, renal disease. And, um, Every, uh, it's always, I learn something and I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to, uh, share these, this knowledge with, I still keep in contact with the, my social worker through the, my old dialysis clinic. I'm constantly emailing her tools to share with the patients because I'm not necessarily going in there after COVID things change a little about being allowed to come in, in there. So she shared this uh, just about the summit i shared that information she said she would send it out uh this last week i was invited it was the very beginning uh support group the kidney transplant support group um at rhode island hospital they haven't been doing it since you know uh, when COVID happened so this is just starting now they're doing in-person support groups so of course i brought my information i brought these tools i brought you know, all the information about transplant. And luckily th there's one gentleman there that spoke only Spanish. And luckily some of our tools, we have them in Spanish and in English. And it's it's just very helpful. And they're, the social worker there at the transplant clinic was happy to have these things. I even handed out the transplant, It was a it's a word search where it's all the terminologies about transplant and each terminology that you find that word in that puzzle, it explains a, a definition of those words that all are affiliated with transplant. And mm -hmm. I brought those with me. I, I'm happy to be able to spread the ed educational tools wherever I go and the clinic, my, my still go to my dialysis uh, clinic doctor, maybe once every six months now since I've had transplant. I, I bring every, I spread it wherever I can, because I wish, I wish I had this when I was there and, and dialysis. I, I actually wish I did. All right. Thank you, Kim. Um, we will get back to you as well. Uh, I'm sure uh, there are folks that are uh, writing in questions for our panelists, but we, we will get to those questions um, after we speak to Don. So, but thank you, Kim. Thank you. Uh, next slide. So uh, now our, our last uh, affinity group is the hospitalization affinity group. This group is focused on supporting the network goal of reducing hospitalizations and emergency room visits. Uh, the affinity group believes it has identified a resource, you know, that will help educate patients on, on how to decrease hospitalizations and unplanned um, readmissions into the hospital. Uh, we have that tool in draft form and we're gonna um, show you the, that picture in the next slide. Um, but we want to also bring on Don Gertz uh, from that hospitalization affinity group. Uh, welcome to the session, Don. Thank you, thank you. Hello yeah. everyone. Hey there. So can you talk a little bit about um, the resource this group is creating? 
Oh, yes, absolutely. So, one of the big issues that that was identified is patients tend to, especially during COVID and such, we were having patients go into the hospital and come back out and then have readmissions very quickly afterwards. And so, part of this is to, you know, obviously, as you said, decrease those readmissions, but overall hospital stays in general. So, uh, there's a lot of information on the form. Um, it goes through things like, what would you classify as an emergency? Should you call your doctor? Should you call the clinic? Should you call the emergency room? Should you go to the emergency room? What do you do once you get there? Um, there's just a lot of information and a lot of, again, misinformation about how you should go, where you should go and who you should talk to and what you should do and what kind of situation. Luckily, this will break it down into multiple situations to where it'll give you kind of an answer, question and answer. If you say yes to this, then you can, you know, you need to call your doctor. Um, it also goes into if you've been admitted in the hospital, what do you do when you come out? What information do you need? And what happens if you get sick again? Who should you call? Because there's a lot of that that really no one understands. You know, it's it, we all have so many doctors having kidney failure that we don't know which doctor we need to call or who we need to talk to. And you can't just call all of them because you wouldn't get anything done. So we're just trying to way, find a way to streamline all of it. So it's all in one document, one, one piece of paper. Everything you have is at your fingertips. Because again, with us dialysis patients, I've been a dialysis patient for three years now. We have this what's called dialysis brain. Everyone knows about it. Uh, you know, you just, you can't remember things like you used to. And so this is a great way to have all of that information that you need to have to share with all of your care team right at your fingertips. So, and Don, why did you select to be a part of the hospitalization affinity group? As a patient, I've been lucky and not had to be hospitalized after I started dialysis. I am one of the lucky few. Um, I have lost three people in my clinic alone in the past six months um, and more friends and family before that um, that had kidney issues and just for whatever reason got sick and, and didn't either couldn't get better or or whatever. And that's that's a problem to me because the main thing is people didn't know what to do when they came out of the hospital or how to avoid getting in the hospital in the first place so i had to i feel like i have to do something you know because i don't want to see any other patients you know leave because of this and or have medical problems or or ultimately pass because of this. And so it's very important to me to make sure that everyone maintains as healthy of a body as you can having ESRD and or, you know, stage four, stage five kidney failure. So that's why it was important to me because there's not enough information out there readily available for us patients or caregivers to be able to keep us a little healthier or or out of the hospital because that's that's the worst place that any of us especially kidney patients can be is in the hospital you know even in an emergency room it opens us up to become just getting that much more problems that you know viruses and flus and covid and everything else that people go to the emergency room for we don't need to be mixed up with that and if we can keep ourselves healthy enough that we don't then that's the ultimate goal. All right. Thank you, Don. You know, you, uh, you're fairly new to the NPFC land. Uh, why do you like being a part of this group? Mm, kind of like the other speaker earlier said, um, the pack is great. I love my pack. My pack is my family, but there's so many there's so much more and there's so many more people that need to be reached the np npfe land gives me that opportunity to have my voice heard not just in my local clinic or my local town not even just in my local state but nationwide and that's the whole reason that i got into the esrd network was when i unfortunately came down with with the acute kidney failure it 
it terrified me because I had no, I had friends on dialysis, but I had no idea what it all involved. So now that I've been for three years and I do know, I know that I have the voice that, or one of the voices that can be heard and needs to be heard because nobody understands what dialysis patients go through. Sometimes not even their care partners understand. So the only way that we're gonna make it more knowledgeable for kidney disease to be in the upfront of everyone on the, in this country, because it's not just us, it's one in four people in this country have kidney disease and don't know. And I don't wanna have anybody else have to go through what I go through three days a week in the clinic. It's, it's exhausting. And I don't wanna see if anyone else go through that. So if, if what we do can help protect the future generations from having kidney disease or developing it so early, I'll do anything I can to, to help that. And that's why I wanted to join um, the NPFE LAN and the KPAC and all the other groups that I'm, that I'm with. Thank you, Don. I appreciate that feedback. Uh, so we're going to um, open up uh, this session to questions. So anyone in the audience uh, that has a question, um, so uh, you can send it to all panelists or uh, everyone using the WebEx chat feature. Uh, we did receive a few questions as our panelists were talking. Uh, uh, one of the questions is whether or not the resources will be made in Spanish. And yes, once they are finalized, um, we're, we're doing a pretty good job of getting the resources um, uh, created in English and in Spanish. Uh, so, uh, yes, the resources will be uh, available to, uh, in Spanish as well. Uh, we also had a question, I believe, for uh, Sonia. Uh, and Sonia, the question is, um, I have worked and continue to work with providers uh, that do not want to discuss uh, home dialysis with their patients uh, because they may not need because because they may not need it. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, as in any type of um, situation, dialysis being one of them, patients have options. And every nephrologist, if not the dialysis unit, needs to explain to patients at the very beginning um, uh, that they go into uh, renal issues that they have options. Like you have the option for second opinions on on different treatments and, and diagnosis, the same with dialysis. You have to be told what your options are and you have to be able to explore that. Uh, that's what's nice about the network is you can always reach out to the network. You can always go onto the website uh, of the network and you can find out what some of these options are. I know that some dialysis units prefer uh, to have people come in center than rather doing at home for a number of reasons. Uh, I know one of the main issues sometimes is because when you're in home dialysis, you have control if there's like an issue with your um, with your uh, weight, uh, with your fluid weight. You can't make any switches when you're in the unit, but you can if you're at home. Uh, and some uh, units do not like patients having that option. But I think that patients a lot of times speak among themselves, and it's important to pass the information to them to let them know, you know, these pamphlets are out there, the website is out there for them to go and see what their options are. And then if they can't get the answers from their dialysis unit, that they really need to speak to their nephrologist or a nephrologist group and other people to see what their options are because it's really important to emphasize the fact you do have options as a dialysis patient. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, another question, I'm going to um, see if Ken Teasley can handle this one. Uh, how do our patients get connected with a peer mentor, especially related to not wanting to get a COVID vaccine, uh, which has been a barrier to tr transplant workup? 
Um, I think the first step in that process would be to speak to the, the center's social worker. Um, you can also speak to the transplant social worker as well to see if they also have uh, some peer mentors on board. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I know that uh, the ESRD networks also have uh, peer mentor programs. Uh, so if you can connect with uh, your ESUD network, um, they will be able uh, to support you. Uh, any other questions? Um, from our audience, if you do, please uh, type them in chat. Uh, Jerome, just one again, I think we can just reemphasize just asking where can someone find the fly flyers that you have shown in this presentation today again? Sure. So the uh, the, the uh, flyers are still in draft form where they're almost complete. We are doing our last round of meetings with the NPFE land SMEs uh, and the affinity groups. Once um, our patients, patient and family member SMEs put their final, um, give us their final edits for the resources, uh, they will be posted on the ESRD NCC website in the NPFE land section of the website. Um, there's currently a, a number of resources created by patients for patients already on the website. Uh, we have uh, home dialysis, uh, depression, uh, COVID-19 resources, transplant resources, infection prevention resources. There are a ton of resources uh, created by patients for patients that are already on the site. Uh, and again, once uh, these resources are completed, uh, they too will be posted to the site. Yeah, and then I see um, that uh, one of our uh, other patients, me, is posted uh, in the chat about other peer mentor resources. Um, uh, Stephanie said that major kidney organizations like AKF, NKF, uh, AAKP all have uh, peer mentor peer mentors. Uh, and uh, Deb, uh, I, I see your question. I am not uh, uh, sure of any pediatric specific resources. Um, uh, so the, NP, the uh, NPFE land resources uh, are, are mainly for uh, adults. Okay. All right. Now, if there are no more questions. I, I guess we'll, we can move on to the to the next slide. Um, I, I do want to point out additional uh, affinity group activities. You know, our, our patients these are doing great things throughout their community. Um, and uh, these are some of the uh, additional activities they are participating in. We have uh, several of our NPFE land members who are a part of the uh, ESRD uh, Treatment Choices Learning Collaborative. Uh, they participate in pacing events um, and other uh, events related to uh, the ETC-LC. Uh, these, uh, many of our NPFE land members are uh, producing uh, podcasts, whether it be kidney caregiver podcasts or transplant podcasts or podcasts on home dialysis. Uh, those resources can be also found on the NPFE LAN uh, website. Uh, and then uh, if those of you that were here uh, for the earlier presentation, our first presentation, uh, Don and Jimmy Bates, they traveled the U.S. talking to uh, patients about their home dialysis options. Uh, they've been featured on several um, local news stations. Um, so I put a link to um, one of their stories uh, in, in the slide deck. And then uh, Kim Pratt, who you just heard from, uh, she won a, a bronze medal during the 
2022 Transplant Games in San Diego in uh, Cornhole. So uh, congratulations to, to Kim. Um, you know, our, our NPFE Lance Meets are um, making a difference, you know, everywhere they go, uh, and we are definitely proud of them. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, as I mentioned, um, all of our NPFE land patient created resources are on the ESRD NCC website. Uh, this is what the site looks like. Um, there's a section called NPFE land um, or uh, NPFE land patient resources. If you just click on that link, link uh, and uh, you'll, you'll be uh, sent to uh, all of the patient resources that were created by the NPFE land members. 